Tell me about it. <laughs> you know, I can't go to a wedding without thinking about ours. You know, me and my veils and him and his skirt. <laughs> and that cute little skirt you were kilt. wearing. It was a kilt. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to wish you and Reva all the happiness in the world. Thank you. Me too. I'm sure it's nice to know that true love exists. Please take your seats. Everyone, please take your seats. I am told the bride has just arrived. Enjoy yourself. I'm Don't worry about you. I'm okay. sorry. She's here. She's here with Jesse. Not a few minutes ago. Okay. Okay. We are gathered here in the sight of God to unite this man and woman in holy matrimony. Before God, as families and as a community of friends, we have gathered here to witness the marriage of Josh and Reva and to share in the joy of their mutual love. Today is very much like any other wedding day, but it is also like no wedding ever known before because it is Josh and Reva's wedding day. To this moment, they bring their dreams that bind them together. They bring a spirit that is uniquely their own. We rejoice in this outward symbol of their inner union, a union created by friendship, respect, and love. The decision to enter the sanctity of marriage requires tremendous faith. Faith in yourselves as individuals and in the strength of your relationship. Faith that you will be able in your marriage, with God's help, to deal with whatever the future holds. And so, since I understand that no one can say the words quite like you two, 
You may exchange your personal vows. I have a vow. Uh, while we're at it. Uh, Josh, I'd just like to say that when I built the house for Vanessa in hopes that she would return, you were the first one in line there to help me. And I think that's probably because your belief in love your love for Reva and her love for you. And, well, hey, I just want to say that, uh, you know, should either one of you ever need it, I'll be the first one in line for you. How about that? We introduce Mr. and Mrs. Joshua Lewis! <laughs> You just couldn't help yourself then, could you? The nuns would have heard me. I would have been scrubbing floors right now. Do you think you could ever forgive me? <laughs> I've already She's forgotten. Very forgiving. Really? Why don't we start over again now? Um, tell me how you two met. Was it here at school? No, I, I've been away at school in Europe. Oh, that's right. You yeah. told me that, honey. She's been adapting to the American way of life pretty easily, though. You know, hamburgers, hot dogs, shootouts at the OK Corral. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> there you guys. Hi. Hi. You guys want some to drink? Pilar, right? Yes. Pilar. Pilar? Pilar. Pilar. <laughs> now tell me, what's your last name? Santos. She's great, isn't she? Pilar is lovely, but her last name is Santos. Yeah, that's right. Honey, she's not related to Carmen Santos, is she? Yeah, actually, she's her daughter. There's nothing to worry about, Mom. Nothing to worry about? Yeah. Who's that guy over there who's been with her? I, that's her bodyguard, isn't it? Now, honey, I don't want to be the kind of person who would judge Pilar according to her mother's reputation, but that family is dangerous, and I'm worried about you. Okay, first of all, Mom, that's not her bodyguard. That's her driver. Second of all, you're right. You can't judge somebody based on their family. So, uh... How long have you and Bill known each other? Not long enough. Come on, Flo, let's, uh, let's go get something to drink before the bar closes, okay? Well, it was nice meeting you. Yes, nice to meet you. Yeah. Right, right. My mother seemed a lot less friendly after she heard my last name. My mom thought you were great. No, Bill. I've seen that look before. What look? She had fear in her eyes. Fear for you. 